In May of 2002, Bethesda released The Elder Scrolls III Morrowind. The idea behind The Elder Scrolls series is simple, being who you want and doing what you want. With a vast open world and cities that feel alive, you are never left without anything to keep you busy. There are no invisible walls. If you can see it, you can explore it. The game was beautiful. Each area has its own distinct look. Every person has a house that belongs to them, which you can break into and steal their stuff if you so choose. The land is expansive. You can spend hours in one sitting just exploring the landscape. The cities are just as much fun to explore as the rest of the world. Some cities are massive and you will get lost just trying to find your way around. There were so many gameplay options available to you. You can play as a warrior, mage, or even a combination of both. Do you want to be stealthy or kill everyone in your sight? Don't want to pay for anything? Why don't you just kill a store owner and take all of his fancy clothes? Once again, the choice is up to you. The amount of freedom in this series is what really makes it stand out. Other games may claim to leave every choice up to the player, but The Elder Scrolls is the only one that truly means it. Armor could be customized in a number of ways. You could have clothing under your armor, or you could wear a robe on top of your armor. This allowed an assortment of enchantments that could leave your character very well defended. You have a variety of spells and weapons to choose from. From a sword to a spear or axe, crossbows to throwing stars, and spells that could let you jump 200 feet into the air or float around at your leisure. You could literally rain death upon your enemies. Nothing was ever out of reach. Some locations required you to know certain spells to get to them. But this game wasn't without its flaws. The most notable was its user interface. It was extremely unorganized and very confusing to get used to. The journal system didn't keep track of open quests, so depending on what you've done since you first got the quest, you might have forgotten all about it. You could also sell quest items which would require you to open the console and type in the item number in order to get it back and finish the quest. And there's no forgetting the cliff racers. <laughs> Overall, the game was great, and I would definitely recommend anyone to play it if they haven't already. In March of 2006, Bethesda released their next game, The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. Oblivion fixed many of the issues that Morrowind had, mainly the accessibility of the game. The journal was completely revamped, keeping track of ongoing quests, what you've done for them so far, as well as quests that you've already completed. Oblivion also introduced fast traveling. This made it much easier to get around the open landscape that Oblivion had to offer, and picking alchemy ingredients was no longer a chore. The interface was improved greatly. You could sort items and spells by type, which made it much easier to go through all of your belongings. The map could have been a little bigger though. Is there any reason why it didn't take over your whole screen? Combat was also improved. Magic could no longer be cast unsuccessfully. You could cast it if your magic skills were the appropriate level. Fighting was no longer a roll of the dice chance, but a damage per hit. Blocking was also in your control a much needed step up from Morrowind's awkward combat settings. Not only that, but the improved graphics created a much more believable and detailed world. The lush landscape was a marvel to look at. Oblivion also had one of the most atmospheric and ambient music I have ever heard in a video game. Once again, you could spend hours just traveling along the roadside or in the forest. All NPCs were given a unique schedule. Each person slept, ate, and did their jobs each day. They would also casually start a conversation with each other. Razan is a talented smith, one of the best around if you ask me. The only problem was that each race only had one voice actor. If you heard one Imperial talk to you, you've heard them all. It wasn't really a problem, and you would most likely forget about it, but you would notice. Oblivion's leveling up system was difficult to master and the enemy leveling was not implemented very well at all. The higher the level you were, the more difficult the enemies became. 
forcing a lot of players to play at the easiest difficulty setting in order to avoid very irritating fights. Bethesda also removed a lot of fun features, such as levitation and teleportation spells, as well as spears, crossbows, throwing stars, and the ability to wear clothes along with your armor. While fixing many issues, and creating a few more, it was hard to imagine a game that could be even more fun than Oblivion. But now, five years later, Bethesda has shown us how. Elder Scrolls V has been released, and it is nothing short of spectacular. Skyrim takes place 200 years after the Oblivion Crisis. With the Septum Dynasty ended, and Cyrodiil still recovering from Mayrune's Dagon's attack, nothing is looking good for Tamriel. The Aldmeri Dominion has been re-established and is rising to power even faster than they have in the past. Skyrim has entered into a civil war, and even worse, the dragons from legend have returned. You begin as a prisoner that was captured while trying to cross the Skyrim border. But, before they get a chance to behead you, you get to escape. After a short training session through a dungeon, you'll be free to explore the land as much as you want to, and there is a lot to explore. Skyrim has made quite a few changes to the series, most notable is the leveling up system. Attributes have been completely discarded. Attributes like strength no longer determine how much damage you do. Instead, the appropriate skills will determine the amount of damage you will inflict. The higher your one-handed or two-handed skills are, the more damage you will do with those weapons. You level up by increasing your skills. It doesn't matter which ones because there are no longer any major skills. Your skill level will also affect how much your leveling bar is increased. The higher the level of the skill that gets raised, the more of an impact it will have on your level progress. This works much better than the awful leveling up system that has been used in previous titles. Each time you level up, you have the option to increase your magic, health, or stamina. You are also given a skill point. These points can be used to unlock perks for a skill. Each of these perks increase the effectiveness of the skill in some way. Like here, you can get perks that make casting spells cost less magic, or automatically heal 250 points of health if your health drops too low. Standing stones have replaced birth signs. These stones can be found throughout Skyrim, and each one will give you special abilities or powers, like being able to increase your carrying capacity. You can only have one active at a time, but you can change them if you want to. Leveled enemies return, but work much better than they did in Oblivion. Some enemies are always weak, but some enemies might have to be saved for later once you've leveled up. When you first begin the game, many enemies will be too difficult for you to fight, 
and you can end up dying. A lot. Once you gain some levels though, you'll be taking down multiple guys with no problem. Character creation returns in a much easier way, with a few new features like any facial hair or scars. And as always, each race has certain abilities that make them stand out from the others. A couple new skills have come to the Elder Scrolls. Smithing allows you to create weapons, armor, and even jewelry. More powerful items require you to have the perk before you can make them. Other than that, the only things you need are the ingredients to make or improve the item. Weapons no longer degrade in quality. Instead, you improve the quality of your items through smithing. Finally, you no longer need to carry around repair hammers. Enchanting has become a skill entirely on its own, but you don't use your own magic to enchant. In order to enchant items, you need an item that already has an enchantment on it. You have to destroy the item to learn its effects. You can then put these effects on your own items. The reason for this was to keep the magic skills and the enchanting skill both in their own independent categories. I understand the idea, but I still wish I could use my own magic to enchant. Increasing any of the magic skills reduces the amount of magic it takes to cast it. More powerful spells will only be available for purchase once you've reached a certain level in that skill. Unfortunately, custom spells have been removed. You can only use what you buy, nor can you create your own custom staff. The combat system has been revamped once again. You can now dual wield weapons. You can either have a spell in your hand, or a weapon. Dual wielding weapons gives you twice the attack power, but you lose the ability to block. Dual wielding spells will make them more powerful, and you can cast two different spells at the same time. There is also a quick inventory system. You can favor items, and then open up the inventory and switch between any of these items quickly. Spells feel much more powerful and menacing than they did in Oblivion, and it is now possible to be a magic-only character. I have always wanted to be able to play as a character that only used magic, but it wasn't very practical considering how much easier it was to be a fighter. Weapons and armor look a lot cooler as well, much like their Morrowind counterparts. Skyrim has also returned to the Morrowind system of currency. Shops only have a certain amount of gold, which gets refilled every couple of days. Bethesda has done a great job at immersing the player into the world. When you walk along the road, the icy wind will give you chills as you traverse the mountainside. Wolves will hunt in packs and attack their prey. You may not want to fast travel too often, because you just might miss something. You now have a reason to go hunting, other than pretending that you actually have a need to. Animals have items that will be of use to you, such as meat or pelts. The meat can be used at a cooking pot to make food, and the pelts you get can be used at a tanning rack. These allow you to turn the pelts into leather, which are used to create armor. Interactions with non-playable characters have been improved. Talking to someone will not freeze the rest of the world, and NPCs will not wander around town aimlessly. Each one has something to do, or somewhere to go. They will also glance at you as you walk by them, while still continuing their activity. You can even get into a fist fight in order to settle an argument. You are also able to marry an NPC. Joining the Dark Brotherhood or Thieves Guild is a little more difficult than just listening to random rumors. Depending on how you play, it might take you a while before you even hear about either of them. And Bethesda is taking their first step to making the Mages Guild feel like an actual school. Character movement has also been improved. Characters' bodies no longer look stiff, and their faces don't look emotionless. You move and swing your weapons much more realistically and fluidly. You also have the ability to sprint. And be careful where you leave your trash. If you drop items, someone may pick them up, or a guard may get upset at you for leaving a dangerous weapon lying around. The biggest change to this chapter of the Elder Scrolls are the dragons. Not only are they a dangerous enemy to Tamriel, they also play a major role in Elder Scrolls lore. Thought to have become extinct after the war between the Saishi and the Capo Toon of Akavir, they have somehow returned, 
and it is up to you to make sure they don't. Dragons are not a scripted event. They will appear randomly as you travel around. You can even see some flying at a distance. Dragons will attack either in the air or on the ground. Once they're killed, you will absorb their soul. Dragon souls are used to unlock shouts. Dragon shouts are various magical attacks that you can learn from word walls, which are written in the dragon language. There are three words to a shout, which you will progressively learn as you explore more areas. Each word makes the shout more powerful. These shouts range from fire or ice attacks to disarming enemies, or throwing your voice to sneak past people. The land of Skyrim is a much colder and harsher environment than Cyrodiil. You won't find much green here, but that doesn't mean Skyrim is less pleasing to look at. Not only do the people look much better, but the environment is much more interactive. When you pick alchemy ingredients, they will actually disappear when you take them. You can also pluck insects right out of the sky. Plants flow in the wind, water flows along a course, and snow falls and collects dynamically. And the lighting effects are very well done. The dungeons were designed by a team of eight people, whereas Oblivion dungeons were done by one person. Some dungeons have puzzles for you to solve that will open a new path for you. Some include rotating pillars to match another set, or examining an item. Although, these account for most of the puzzles you will find. Skyrim also features over 70 voice actors, compared to the about 13 for Oblivion. There are much more quests available than previous titles. You'll end up getting so many quests, you won't know which one to do first. While you're trying to do one quest, you might end up stumbling on five more. There are also quest markers that show you exactly what item or person you're supposed to go to. Skyrim has implemented Radiant Quests. The Radiant Quest system is a quest generator, meaning that these quests can be given out infinitely. The Elder Scrolls series has usually been games that could be played indefinitely, but with these Radiant Quests, it can truly be never-ending. The game will also relocate your destination for a quest if you have already explored the area. Like here, it says I need to go to Greywater Gorge, but instead I am getting sent to Sunderstone Gorge. After you have finished a guild's main questline, there are more Radiant Quests available. This way, you are never completely finished with a guild. This is a much more fleshed out idea from Oblivion's end of guild system. In Oblivion, you would just report to someone and receive some gold. In Skyrim, you are given actual quests, where you will need to go to a location and accomplish a task. The only problem I have with the guilds is that they feel too short. I was able to complete them in a very short amount of time, without feeling like I did much at all. I guess it doesn't matter too much, because there are still a lot of other quests available. With a game as open-ended as Skyrim, where no two people will play the same two quests in the same order, it's impossible to bug test every scenario. And that is always the biggest problem with Bethesda games. The bugs. Oddly enough, I have not run into any game-breaking bugs. I have come across a few visual bugs, but nothing that would ruin my game. Although, the bug list on their official website is very extensive. The only major issue I have run into is a PC-related bug, where the game will randomly crash to the desktop without even showing a crash report. Other than that, my game has been fine. But there is a person I know who also plays on the PC, and after 60 hours of gameplay, his save file disappeared. Completely. And he had to start a brand new game. The PlayStation 3 also suffered from a save file bug, where if the file size became too large, the game would begin to lag, eventually making the game unplayable. There was another issue that affected every platform, where dragons would not properly give the player a soul. Besides bugs, the next major issue is with the inventory system. It has taken a major step back from Oblivion. The inventory is just one big list, and going through your items can be a little annoying. Also, on the PC, 
going through dialogue options does not work half the time. Scrolling with the mouse wheel or pointing at a dialogue option will not properly highlight which one you wish to use, causing you to choose an option that you did not intend to. And navigating the perk trees can be a little irritating. The only way to make sure it will work is to use the keyboard. There are also some times where the game will think you have used a shout when you actually haven't. It's also not very intuitive to use storage containers. When you're viewing items in the chest, it's E to take one item and R to take everything. But when you're viewing your items, E equips or uses the item while R is to store. This has caused me to equip items I didn't want to, accidentally take all of the items, or eat an ingredient when all I wanted to do was just put the item away. Also, if you have too many items in a chest, it can cause the game to lag. Despite these issues, I do not think they hinder the game at all. Whenever something happens, I usually forget about them a few moments later. This game is definitely worth a purchase. It will be a long time until there is another one like it. I have already put a lot of time into this game, and there is no end in sight. If the amount of time I put into Morrowind and Oblivion is any indication into how much time I will play Skyrim, then I will be playing for many years to come. It doesn't have multiplayer, but it doesn't need it. We drink to our youth, to the days come and gone. There are very few times where a game can leave you in awe, where you can become so enthralled into the game's world, where the ability to be a bulking warrior, a powerful mage, or even a stealthy assassin are all within your grasp. It's a world that's filled with history, culture, and the unknown. This is a game that will keep you occupied for years. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim will not leave you disappointed. I give it a 5 out of 5. But this land is ours, and we'll see it wiped clean Of the scourge that has sullied our hopes and our dreams Many, I fear, still need convincing. We've been soldiers a long time. We know the price of freedom. Tell me, Galmar, why do you fight for me? If not for me, what then? for the men I've held in my arms, dying on foreign soil. I fight for their wives and children whose names I heard whispered in their last breath. I fight for we few who did come home, only to find our country full of strangers wearing familiar faces. I fight for my people, impoverished to pay the debts of an empire too weak to rule them, yet brands them criminals for wanting to rule themselves. so that all the fighting I've already done hasn't been for nothing. I fight because I must. But the day words are enough. 
will be the day when soldiers like us are no longer needed. I will gladly retire from the world, were such a day to dawn. Aye, but in the meantime, we have a war to plan. <laughs>